Who here sells life insurance? Awesome. Who wants to sell more life insurance? Who wants to sell bigger life insurance policies? That's what I'm going to teach you today. Now, I, like Nate Offer, was born and raised basically in northern New Jersey. I talk very, very fast. If you have to, please feel free to take pictures of the slides. That's what they're there for, okay, as we go through this. Is that up on the screen? All right. So I sell insurance personally. I've been doing it for 10 years. I also train agents. So I own Fournier Enterprises, which is a coaching, training, consulting company for agents all across the country. I have my own agency, and I'm president of sales for Innovative Financial Group, which is a nationwide IMO. I began my career in 2010. I got licensed at 21 years old. Uh, back in college, started at Northwestern Mutual. I uh, felt like the world was my oyster. I was ready to rock and roll and make my millions. I was at two captives, and then I went fully independent in 2012. And at that time, I was a pretty good recruiter. I was good on selling the dream. I wasn't living the dream, personally, but I was good at selling the dream. And I, I hired a couple bad apples and wound up getting hit with $48,000 in roll-up debt. That sucked. So as a 23-year-old kid, I was flipping friggin' Pokemon cards and selling shoes and everything. I had two carriers at the time. Most of the business that I wrote went to debt. And in 2014, about 18 months later, I was completely out of debt, and I had about $25,000 saved in my bank account. At that time, I didn't have an LLC or anything like that, so it was in a separate checking account. I don't condone that. <laughs> To get out of debt, I had to learn a couple things. One, how to overcome the same old objections. What are they? I can't afford it. I want to think about it. I got to talk to my mom, my sister, my cousin, my brother. Like Jordan said the other day, the friggin' tooth fairy, right? How many people would like to never get those objections ever again? Yes, awesome. I wanted to learn how to sell more than 30 to 40% of my sits. I think it was Jordan and or Nate that mentioned you're, you're closing 30 or 40% of your sits. You're not actually closing. 30 to 40% of the people that you sit with on a daily basis want what you're selling. Those are called laydowns. I wasn't closing squat, right? I was just getting free sales. And then how to stop wasting time in a house. Pretty likable guy. I think so. I think some of you think so, right? I would become too friendly with these people. They'd be like, oh, Pete, you're so nice. You spent four hours with us. I don't really need life insurance. I'd be like, what the hell, right? Nice guys finished last at that point in time. So here's a couple of things, and I'm not here to brag. I just want to show you what's possible. If you're not at these numbers yet, I will help you get there in the next 17 minutes. My best week ever was 37,300 issue paid. When I coach agents, I do not give a crap what you submit. It makes no sense. I care about what you take home. So all these numbers are going to be issue paid numbers. I also have a 92% persistency with the majority of my carriers. So these numbers stay on the books. 37.3 on age leads, big proponent of age leads. $87,779 in 100 days. I set a challenge for myself to write 100K in 100 days. And I said, I'm going to do it without any leads. That's all on referrals. 400,000, a little bit over in a rolling 12 months issue paid was my best year. Key takeaways of what I changed. You'll see these keys on a couple slides. Take pictures of those. They're important. I wanted to address every rebuttal before it occurred. I didn't want to get, I want to think about it. I can't afford it. I got to talk to the tooth fairy. I wanted to get that out of the way in my presentation before I went to the close. I wanted to make the prospects sell themselves. Like some of the speakers went through today, you want them to beg you to buy what you're selling. And I wanted to develop the perfect presentation, which I feel like I did. You guys want to see it? You sure you want to see it? All right, here we go. So building rapport, this is huge. We all talk about it. It's all over Facebook. Oh, you didn't build enough rapport, blah, blah, blah. I build rapport in a different way than most life insurance agents, I think. I try to avoid small talk as much as possible. People don't care about the weather, how bad the Jets did on Sunday, whatever. When I'm, quote, unquote, small talking or building rapport, I'm establishing dominance and credibility when I'm sitting across the table from Joe and Mary. How am I doing that? I'm talking about the current state of the economy. I'm talking about things that are relevant to what I'll be pitching that day. What happened to them due to COVID right now? Are they still working? Was their income affected? What's the current state of Social Security, of Medicare? Who's going to become president? I know we talk about avoiding politics. I don't play by those rules. 
Okay, so I want to develop rapport by establishing myself as the thought leader and the person with the knowledge in the room. Okay? And then I want to have a seamless transition into my presentation. So many sales are lost in the insurance game because you get people that are like, oh, Joe and Mary, so maybe um, I'm going to try to sell you a policy now. Right? You need a seamless transition. If you don't have one or you're kind of uncomfortable getting out of the rapport stage, I want you to learn this sentence. Joe and Mary, I'd love to sit and chat with you all day long, but there are three things that I need to go over with you today. And this is the start of the presentation. The three things are, one, I'm an independent insurance broker. If you're captive, talk to me after this. I'm an independent insurance broker. What does that mean to you? It means I'm going to be able to get you the best product for the best price, regardless of conditions or finances. What did I avoid coming up later? I want to think about it. I can't afford it, right? Get rid of it. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to do a brief risk assessment. How many people have had, oh, I don't want to give you my social. I don't know my meds. I don't know this. I don't know that. I'm going to do a brief risk assessment. One part financial and one part health. In the financial risk assessment, I'm going to make sure that you qualify and that I only show options within your budget. Number two, health assessment. I'm going to make sure you qualify to go through underwriting. What do I need for that? All of their information, right? Address every rebuttal before it comes up. You're establishing that you can get them covered within whatever budget they tell you. And number three, you're starting to close already. It's my entire presentation. That's it. It's like six minutes. Okay? Risk assessment into benefit or budget. Now, Joe and Mary, this is where you come into play. I sit with dozens of people on a weekly basis, and they usually fall into one of two categories. One, benefit-centric people, or two, budget-centric people. Now, benefit-centric people may tell me, Pete, I know I need like half a million dollars worth of coverage. I'm not really sure how much that costs. Or budget-centric people may say, Pete, I know I need coverage, but we can't spend more than $200 a month. How many people would like to consistently write $200 a month life policies? This is how you do it. The prospect is going to sell themselves. Here's a pro tip for you guys. The slide will move to the next one. Pro tip. Ask for, you want, for what you want to get. Notice how I planted the seed. You're either getting $500,000 worth of coverage or you can afford $200 a month. It's easier for you to close now that exact sale or maybe 10% above or below, okay? Read their body language after you say that sentence so that way you can tell if it's too expensive or not. Don't let them tell you. They'll tell you with their face, right? Don't let the objection come out. Now, use your common sense. If some of you guys are selling final expense coverage, maybe you want to talk in terms of $30,000 worth of coverage or $85 a month or whatever the case may be, right? Gauge your demographic. I sit with a lot of mortgage protection appointments, right, and a lot of referrals. I'm picking my lead when I'm getting referrals. So I know those people can afford at least $200 a month. So that's what I throw out there. Now, cater the pitch based on what they ask for. Either benefit-centric people, which say, yeah, I, I do need half a million dollars worth of coverage. Okay, show them. Or budget-centric. I can only afford $200 a month. Awesome. Show them. And this is how you deliver the proposal. It's a three-option close, always. I don't care if I'm trying to sell my fiancé, my best friend from college, a random lead, or a referral. It's always a three option close based on what they choose. I always give it option A, a low value and low cost option. I give them option B, what they asked for. Did they tell me they can afford $200 a month or they wanted half a million dollars of coverage? That's always option B. And then an upsell, high value, high cost. I'm going to show you how I deliver this with actual examples. Okay? The goal is to not get a no. That's the whole goal. If you fail on option A, that's okay. You're still taking home money, right? Here's a mortgage protection example. Fully underwritten term, $50 a month. Option B, maybe a term return of premium, $100 a month. Option C, IUL, 
or whole life for their entire mortgage. You're only going to get bigger sales if you're ballsy enough to ask for them, right? So I, you, you got a $300,000 mortgage, I'll show you $300,000 worth of whole life as option C, $500 a month. Here's a final expense option. Option A, coverage for today. Joe and Mary, if you die today, this will cover the cost of a funeral, about 10,000 bucks. Option B, cover the cost of a funeral tomorrow. We're covering against inflation. Or option C, you can max it out. We get you the full 30,000, you don't have to worry about this ever again. Now the only objection they can give you, I wanna think about it, that's done. I need to talk to so-and-so, that's done. I can't afford it. This only happens in one situation. If they take you down the benefit-centric path and they say, yeah, I need a half a million dollars worth of coverage, okay? And then you present all three options of a half million, fully underwritten term, let's say, term return of premium, whole life. And they go, oh my God, that's, all of those are so expensive. Here's what you say. Well, Joe and Mary, I, t I totally understand. But remember in the beginning of the presentation where I asked you if you were more benefit-centric or budget-centric and you guys said benefit? Listen, I'm so sorry. I just gave you exactly what you asked for. If you're more of a budget-centric person, that's totally okay. What's that budget number? That's it. And then re-quote based on their budget. Is this making sense? Is this stupid simple? Awesome. Now you're only halfway there. Pitch on total value, not on price. People are so concerned about, oh my God, it's $300 a month in premium. You're not pitching on that. You're not pitching on the cost. You're pitching on the end product. I don't even want you, I mean, you can bring up value. Like if I'm selling term, I talk about living benefits, that's value, right? But how you truly pitch on value is this way. If I'm gonna sell you a term policy, $50 a month, Let's say it's a 30-year term. Joe and Mary, nine times out of 10, more than that, you're not gonna pass away during that term. That's how insurance companies make their money. They don't make it on permanent. So at the end of this 30 years, Joe and Mary, you're gonna be out $18,000, negative, and you'll probably need something else. Now, term return of premium, even though it's a little bit more expensive, at the end of 30 years, you're out $0. If you don't die, that's okay. You get all your money back. You're building equity within the policy. Option C, although this may look crazy to you, let's say it's $300 a month. At the end of 30 years, you're coming out on top positive $100,000. So Joe and Mary, what would you rather do at the end of 30 years? Be out 18K, break even, or make $100,000? What do you guys want? Upsold. That's it. Based on the end game. Base all your sales on the end game. Underwrite while you're taking notes. Okay? I don't want to see any awkward pauses or anything like that. So as you're drawing this out, ask them questions. Any diabetes, heart attack, stroke, cancer in the last 24 months? Right? What medications are you on? You want to be multitasking. The best life insurance agents can multitask. If you need help, practice. Right? Practice on your spouse, and your brother, your, so your cousin, your sister. Doesn't matter. Practice going through the e-app if you're an e-app person while asking questions. Now, the majority of your work is done. You addressed every rebuttal before it occurred. You made the prospects sell themselves. Now you have to solidify the sale. I only have like two minutes left, so uh, I'm not going to go into my solidification process, but I can go over it with you guys afterwards. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Rule number five, remove limiting beliefs. We all have these, but we don't know it typically. There are mental barriers called limiting beliefs that are things in your head that are mentally holding you back from taking the next level in your life. For example,